Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back friends. My name is Muhammad Kamil Khan and you guys watching Kami Microbial Jess channel. Today in this video we are going to talk about protein splicing. Okay. In previous series of videos lecture if you guys remember we talked about the splicing technique in case of mRNA that how the messenger RNA or how the RNA are spliced and why the splicing is important we talked all the things in mRNA but we didn't talk about the protein splicing does protein splicing occur or no we didn't know about that so today in this video lecture I'm going to talk about the protein splicing and why it is important uh, and what are the steps involved in protein splicing everything we'll talking about the protein splicing in our detail so please stay tuned and keep watching okay friends so let's start now what is protein splicing if you guys remember we talked the splicing splicing is a natural process which occur inside a cell in which the junk portion of the genetic material are cleaved out and the important portion are connected to each other which are used which are used for the different purposes by the cell just like in messenger rna if the junk portion like uh, entron which don't take a part in protein synthesis are cleaved out uh, by itself or sometimes it involves uh, different kinds of protein and due to which the entron portion are cleaved out but the uh, exon portion are remaining and it will connect to each other and make a mature mrna due to which it will further use for the protein synthesis it will always occur in case of few carrot not in prokaryotes and uh, <clears throat> today in this video we are going to talk about protein splicing that how protein splicing will occur so now how the protein splicing will occur before going to explain the protein splicing that uh, why the protein splicing is important protein splicing is important that once the uh, extra portion or uh, well, work less portion which is present in the protein are removed out so then this protein will be folded uh, or it will convert it into a secondary structure due to this way uh, protein will further used by the cell okay so that's why protein splicing is very important due to protein splicing the protein uh, um, uh, chain the polypeptide chain will easily be folded and it will be easily converted into secondary or tertiary structure now what exactly happened in protein splicing first of all let me draw the protein structure so all of you better know that protein is made up of uh, amino acid uh, and each amino acid are connected with each other uh, via a peptide bond so when amino acid a lot of amino acid are connected with each other through a peptide bond so we get a lot of peptide bond this peptide bond is uh, at that time we call that peptide bond polypeptide chain okay so polypeptide chain is nothing but it is also a protein so how exactly it will be look like so let me draw okay friend so let's suppose this is the polypeptide chain as you can see so this is the linear structure of the protein okay now these red circle as you can see these, uh, these red circle and these green circle are actually the amino acid okay and the green circle as you can see which is actually the amino acid these are those amino acid which don't have any function which are workless so what happen these amino acid chain or these uh, a workless chain of the amino acid should be cleaved out or removed out due to which we call that protein splicing okay most of the time protein splicing is a self catalysis process if you guys remember we talked that uh, rna is sometimes uh, self catalysis and sometimes it require a catalysis uh, machinery uh, we talked that uh, in RNA, what we talked uh, in RNA, we talked that there are several types of protein are involved for the splicing, but sometimes we talk that, that there is uh, there are no protein, there are no protein involved in the splicing. But in this case, in protein splicing, we don't require any other protein for the splicing technique. In this case, the splicing will occur by itself. That why we, that's why we call it self-catalysis process. So it doesn't require any catalysis. You know, the blue lines as you can see these are actually the peptide bond so a lot of peptide bond is present as you can see due to which we call it polypeptide chain so let me write this is called as polypeptide chain and normally this polypeptide chain is also called as protein
okay just like in mRNA we have five prime end and we have three prime end but in this case we have a minor group which is the n terminus end so this is the n terminus end and we have another uh, end which we call it c terminal end and in c terminal end what we have we have the carboxylic group and uh, with amino group what we have if we see the amino group like structure so in this case we have also a lone pair now this lone pair is using as a nucleophilic and it will nucleophilically attack to some carbon or phos phosphate whatever you can say but in this case they will attack to this carbon that's why this nucleophilic or this non pair is very important now what happened this area as you can see we call that five prime amino group area and this one area is called as three prime carboxylic group area and when these uh, uh, red circle as you can see which is actually the amino acid these are the functional amino acid and when these amino acid are further used for their function we call that extein while in case of rna in messenger rna in case of rna we have the portion which is used for the protein synthesis we call that exon and we have those portion which don't take a part in protein synthesis we call that enteron similarly these green circle as we can see they don't uh, it means these portion are workless they don't have any kind of function so these portion are called as antene so it should be cleaved out or removed out okay now this one area is called amino extein and this one area is called it carboxylic extein and in the middle we have antene similarly in this case antene are very less but in case of rna the antron are in a large number okay now what happened in this case what happened we have at that specific area as you can see at that specific area we have the carboxylic group while at that specific area we have the amino group so in this case if the amino group is present like at that specific area let me label at that specific we have amino group and at that specific area we have the carboxylic group okay so how exactly the splicing will occur in case of the protein these are the basic terms that you need to understand now let's talk about that so this is the uh, not the exact structure but this is how the protein structure will be look like this is the linear structure of the protein and it don't have any function when the protein are folded when the non linear structure of the protein are done then it will be workable but before folding this antin portion should be removed out this antin portion contain those amino acid which are workless for example we have tyrosine serine cysteine uh, alanine let's suppose these are the amino acid which don't have the work and in this mid portion the amino acid uh, sequences are also not in a uh, uh, correct way that's why it should be removed so what happened let's let me draw here in a rough form so let's suppose so okay so let's suppose this is the extein 1 and this is the extein 2 and we have the antin okay now what happened during protein splicing at that specific position as you can see we have the carboxylic group at that specific position we have the amino group so what happened let's suppose this is the amino group means with this antene portion i'm talking about the antene that specific position as you can see we have the amino group like that and at that specific position we have the carboxylic group so what happened they have a lone pair of electrons so it will attack nucleophilically to this carboxylic group and we will get a larynx like structure so let me draw this is not the carboxylic group sorry this will be the amino group as you can see and this is the carboxylic group so what happened it will nucleophilically attack so once this lone pair will nucleophilically attack to this carboxylic group so we will get a larynx like structure so the structure will be in this form so let's suppose this is the extein 1 and this is the extein 2 so it will come closer during nucleophilic attack 
these x t1 and x t2 are very come closer to each other as you can see and due to this way we will get a larynx like structure okay and uh, now what happen after that uh, with this now this is the carboxylic group of entron uh, entine at that specific area as you can see with this extine we have the amino group while at that specific position of entine we have the carboxylic group so what happen they have also a lone pair of electrons so it will attack to this carboxylic group so after that these two portion are connected with, with each other while the uh, uh, extine portion are released so we will get the structure like that this is the extine one which have the carboxylic group and this is the extine two which have the amino group so we will get the structure like that as you can see so after that it will be connected with each other and after some time this extine portion will get released out as you can see so this is how the protein splicing will occur this is the self protein splicing or self catalysis splicing so in this case we didn't talk or we didn't watch the uh, involvement of other protein which are responsible for the splicing okay now what happened this is all about the splicing technique in case of the protein let's talk about a little bit with this entine that what are the important of this entine this uh, entine are not actually important but this entine will create a problems inside the bacterial cell but inside our own cell it will doesn't create any kind of the problem this entine as you can see these are actually the double stranded dnas and all of you better know dnas is an enzyme which can cut the double stranded dna so double stranded dna it means that entine is acting as a double stranded dna it will cut the double stranded dna in case of bacterial cell if we talked about if this process if protein splicing occur in case of a bacterial cell let's suppose if this is a bacterial cell as you can see so inside a bacterial cell we have the double stranded dna so once entine are produced so it will cleave the dna as you can see so the dna will be cleaved and remember guys once the dna are cleaved or cut so then ultimately the bacteria will die because the dna are very important portion in case of bacterial cell but if we talked about the protein splicing so we can say protein splicing in a bacterial cell is are very rare it will not occur but once it occur it will create problem for the bacterial cell and the bacterial cell will die if this process occur in case of eukaryotic cell so let's suppose so if it is occur in case of eukaryotic cell let's suppose this is our own cell so inside our own cell we have two set of the dna remember guys one set we get from the mother while the other set of the dna we get it from the father as you can see so during protein splicing once the entine are produced once the protein splicing occur in case of the eukaryotic cell and let's suppose the entine produce so let's suppose if it cleave the double stranded dna remember it will cleave any one of the set of the dna either it will cleave the mother dna or it will cleave the father one dna so once it will cleave the dna any one of the dna set so after that what happen this dna set will come closer to this dna so let's suppose it will come closer to this one dna and after that a repair mechanism will occur which we call that double stranded dna damage repair system so this one system is get activated in this case what happen the half portion of the synthesis uh, the half portion of the repair dna as you can see will mix to the half portion of the damaged dna so once it will these two dna set are mixing with each other so the dna will get repaired the damaged dna will get repaired and we will get the result like that
So we will get the structure like that. So it is actually the mixed component of the DNA set. So remember, if the protein splicing occur in case of eukaryotic cell, so it will cleave the DNA, any one set of the DNA, either it will cleave the mother DNA or the father DNA. Once it cleaved, so then what happened? The healthy set of the DNA or the repair set of the DNA will come closer to this damaged DNA. And what happened? The some portion of this healthy DNA will be, you know, matched to this damaged DNA and once it will match to this damaged DNA so then mix match component will occur as we can see so after that the DNA will get repaired as you can see and this process is called a double stranded DNA damage repair mechanism okay so this is how we can say that if the protein splicing occur in case of bacterial cell it will damage the bacteria but while if it is occur in case of eukaryotic cell it will not damage the eukaryotic cell but still the protein splicing is very important why because once the this chunk portion are removed out so then each extreme portion are connected and it will further fold it into a secondary structure and after that the protein will be workable functionable and then this protein will be used for different kind of the purposes by the cell so this